think this is from an earlier essay, actually. <laughs> this is from a, an issue of Plowshares, uh, mm -hmm. which you which you guest edited. Um, you talked about the, the the tendency of avant-garde practices to ossify, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that in turn calls forth for for, for new new practices. Um, I'm wondering, how does this this flux of, of artistic practice affect the the teaching of poetry, and then? How do you keep your own art from the boneyard? <laughs> yeah, sure, good mm -hmm. questions. Well, um, I feel very encouraged by uh, one aspect of the multiplication of, of writing programs and the uh, increasingly uh, rapid and elaborate network uh, connecting young writers all over mm -hmm. the country. Uh, and, and the part of that that I, I particularly like is that I think it's much more difficult now to maintain any kind of singular allegiance to a movement or uh, a, a, a kind of uh, limiting aesthetic philosophy. So my students seem to read in a very eclectic fashion and are just as likely to show up uh, one day with a, a poem that uh, looks like a, a, an Olson-influenced composition by Field that's scattered all over the place and, and might not have a, uh, a, a an eye, a romantic self, which is organizing and filtering experience for us. So they'll do that one day, the next day they'll show up with a sonnet. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just find this delightful, that uh, the kind of balkanization of American poetry, <laughs> which in the past was uh, enforced by distance, uh, by, by sort of regional camps, uh, by uh, systems of affiliation, right. seems to have become something much more like the big vibrating web. Uh, and, and so I like that a lot. Uh, and, and that's uh, actually the answer to the second part of your mm -hmm. question, too, that you know, I hang out with all these young writers who are um, reading things that I haven't read. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm continually being pushed to look at what they're thinking about. And I feel like this, particularly, like say, the last 10 years uh, have been of teaching time with graduate student poets have been very important for me as a writer because I've been pushed by that to allow uh, some different kinds of discontinuities, uh, some different sorts of ways of thinking about the role and position of the speaker in a poem mm. have, have come uh, to the table in my work. Mm. Um, it's, and you know, the other part of that is that you always uh, uh, have to be paying attention to what you don't know how, how to do yet. Uh, if you're going to stay alive as an artist, you, you don't go on solving the same problems in the same ways. Mm. Well, th that, that takes me to uh, a question about uh, your, your more recent work where you're looking at, at Whitman. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, um, and in, in some of your poems and, and your, your, uh, the one essay of yours that I read on, on Whitman, you talk about the unsayable. And, uh, and in the case of Whitman, the, the, the pointing to the absence of something to signify its, its, its presence. Right. Um, I'm wondering, is, is such an art of, uh, of absence um, needed in our time when it seems that everything is sayable and, and mm. nothing is unsayable? Mm -hmm. Wow, interesting question. Well, um, we might want to draw a distinction between the unsayable and the unspeakable. Mm. And, and for, for, uh, certainly for Whitman, uh, there was uh, plenty that was, that was unspeakable um, in terms of uh, his uh, sexuality, his, his, his desiring life, um, his point of view about uh, the body and the uh, equality of body and soul. Um, his his radical feminism, uh, his his sort of wild politics for for his day. Mm -hmm. um, the remarkable thing about Whitman is how much of the unspeakable he said, uh, and and of course he he did his backpedaling and, and and his pronoun changing and so on. But it's still just extraordinary that he had the nerve to do what he did. I think he was also cognizant of the unsayable, by which I mean that which resists language. Mm. Uh, Whitman wants us to not simply enjoy his poems as aesthetic objects, but to, but to read them and be changed. Mm -hmm. He believed that he could, uh, as a poet, serve 
as an agent of social change in the most profound sense, which was to, to challenge the way that people understood reality mm -hmm. and, and to make them rethink their relations with other people upon that, that basis. Um, I think he was perfectly serious mm -hmm. about feeling that his poems could be the foundation for a new social order based upon mutual affection and desire mm -hmm. and mutual commonality. Um, he thought better of that it, it, as time went on or was, was challenged in, in this point of view, but his poems push up against the limit of what language can do. Mm. And, and he himself points to this many times. He, he, in Crossing Brooklyn Ferry, he says, uh, uh, you know, that, that which the teachings could not teach mm. has been communicated. Has it not? Yeah. You know, that what the books can't say, I've said, haven't I? Yeah. You know, he, he's always he's pointing us to what he calls the buds beneath speech. So he mm. has this great faith that there's a kind of transmission that can go on beneath or above or beside words in, in some way. So I think that, to, to extrapolate from that, mm. that, that all great poems are pushing up against the boundaries of the unsayable, that mm. they somehow do this work of importing more of what we do not expect language to be able to do, really, to talk about how it feels to be alive, to, to capture something of, uh, you know, what it is to love another person, to be afraid of dying, to be uh, uh, strangely awake in the present. You know, mm -hmm. poetry manages to do that, uh, and it only seems to happen when we turn away from ways in which we already know how to speak. Mm -hmm. This is sort of going back to that question about you know, staying awake as an artist, how you keep philosophizing. Mm -hmm. I think you have to constantly push up against what you don't know how to do, and what you're not quite certain can be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a different thing than, than yeah. the, the sort of social constriction of, uh, of of feeling that you know anything can be said or right. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it.